Well, hello and welcome to Raj Sabha TV. You're watching India Fights Back with me, Rajat Kain. Well, India has started world's largest mass vaccination program and it has been to a smooth start to begin with. Barring if sick, few cases where it's been registered, there are some adverse reactions, but authorities have said there's nothing worrying about those findings. Now, along with this feat in another major achievements, India will start supplying COVID-19 vaccines to friendly countries like Bhutan, Maldives, Bangladesh, Nepal, Myanmar and Seychelles starting today. And few other countries too will get its consignment after the confirmation of necessary regulatory clearances. The government of India has received several requests for the supply of Indian manufactured vaccines from the neighbouring countries and key partners ever since it announced the manufacturing of vaccines to fight back the COVID-19 pandemic. It is also important to note that even during the pandemic period, when the pandemic was at its highest in 2020, India worked to boost its pharmaceutical production, especially of hydrochloroquine and paracetamol and of course remdesivir to respond to growing global demand. So how important is this for India to supply the vaccines to the countries and besides vaccines, will India also will be in a position to give them the technical know-how. To discuss further on this issue, we are joined with three guests, Professor Y.K. Gupta, he is National Scientific Coordinator, PVPI, Urvashi Prasad, Public Policy Specialist, Neeti Ayog, that's a government think tank, and Dr. Puneet Mishra, he is co-investigator, co-vaccine from All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Delhi. Well, many thanks for joining us, uh, sir. Uh, Professor Gupta, let me start with you here. Uh, we have been discussing about uh, the India's prowess in terms of uh, the vaccination. And in, 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 uh, in my last uh, meeting with you uh, on, on India Fight Back, we were exploring the merits of vaccination and how we have to fight uh, or, or for that matter, how there is a requirement for communication about the effectiveness of vaccine. Now, going a step further, as we have started off a mass vaccination program, how do you look at a development of India supplying vaccines to several countries? There are few countries where the consignment will leave today or possibly must have left. And there are few countries where it will reach once they have got a necessary clearance from their own regulators. Professor Gupta. It's a matter of great pride for each and every citizen of the country and particularly scientists and a pharmaceutical sector mm -hmm. that uh, India in a very record short time has been successful in making the vaccines for COVID which is totally made in India which is Bharat Biotech and right. also in the Israel. vaccine which was developed by uh, Oxford and AstraZeneca and now being sent in large volume being mm -hmm. manufactured by Serum Institute yep. and not only that we are making quality vaccines for our citizens but mm -hmm. we have made a vaccines which will go to all our neighboring countries the friendly countries as you right. mentioned rightly to the Bhutan, Bangladesh, Maldives and all those neighboring countries. So this indicates two things. One is the competence of our, of our scientists in making quality medicines and now mm. quality seen. Right. The, the scientists which can arise to any situation and the capacity of Indian pharmaceutical sector to make the self-sufficiency and also to meet the requirement. Now, mm -hmm. it's important to know that each country has its own stringent regulatory system. Yes. And yes. unless they examine each and every data from our country's drug or the vaccine for safety and efficacy, purity, they will not give an order for a single thing. Now, this is mm -hmm. the request is coming from them, which testifies mm -hmm. that yes, we have now the word pharmacy. Now we have been, India has been proven earlier also, the major supplier of vaccine globally, the polio vaccine, the measles vaccine, okay. and in fact, two thirds of the vaccines are produced in India. 
and the major exporter is the vaccine. Mm -hmm. The India is also called as a pharmacy of the world because we, from pre-independence, when each and every drug used to be imported drug, now we are the major exporter of pharmaceutical products globally. Hmm. In US, such a large quantity of Indian drugs, in spite of isolated news, which are blown out of proportion, but hmm. still, if you just see the majority of the Americans, the Europe, the Africa, and these countries, they buy Indian pharmaceutical products. Mm -hmm. This cannot happen unless we meet our quality mm -hmm. and we meet cost. So we are in India are known for making quality product, affordable cost, mm -hmm. and the, the, the meeting not only our requirement, but treating the patient at large from the affluent to the the population which is poorly uh, or say um, not so rich or mm -hmm. poor countries, middle income countries at an mm -hmm. affordable price. That's the most important thing. That's important. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, certainly that's most important and also like you highlighted about our uh, manufacturing sector, pharmaceutical manufacturing sector. Uh, let me get you uh, here, here, Urushi Prasad uh, from Niti Aayog. Uh, Ma'am, India have seen world's second highest COVID case load. So how uh, we will uh, balance the domestic requirement as well as the international demand? Urvashi. Yes, so, you know, throughout this pandemic, um, mm. India has, has tried to help uh, countries in its neighborhood after we have secured our domestic requirements. Uh, so if mm. you would remember that, you know, when we were in February, March, um, our domestic supplies of, you know, basic personal protective equipment and 95 masks, ventilators, uh, all of that was also a big challenge for us even to meet the requirements within the country. Now, right. it is true that intensified efforts of the government through uh, scaled up public-private partnerships that we actually managed to ramp up supply of all of that in a very short span of time. Mm, and absolutely. soon we realized that we could, you know, meet our domestic requirements, but we mm. could also then go a step further uh, to help countries in our neighborhood. Uh, mm. So that is when we actually reached out and we have supplied um, various kinds of medicines and equipment throughout this period. Um, now, coming to the vaccine, you know, we have to remember that the COVID vaccine is also a global public good at the end of the day. Right, uh, because right. in a pandemic, uh, uh, a single COVID case anywhere in the world is a threat to the rest of the world. That is the mm. nature of how, you know, infectious okay. diseases and pandemics mm. work. Um, so in that context, the fact that we are reaching out to our neighborhood, uh, we are trying to support them in their efforts to battle this pandemic and bring an end to it. Uh, is definitely very important. I think everyone must be rest assured that this will not happen at the cost of our own requirements. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the government will ensure that there are adequate doses, there is adequate supply of the vaccine uh, to meet right. our domestic right. needs. Um, but additionally, if we can help other countries in our neighborhood, then I think that is a very uh, important move and a very important gesture because ultimately there's a lot of commonalities that we have uh, with our neighborhood. Uh, and, and it's, you know, not just supplying the vaccine, but we can mm -hmm. also provide a lot of know-how uh, in terms of managing the cold yes. chain, and in yes. terms of digital uh, technologies, right. how do we roll that out? We can also share that with those countries. So I think right. it's a very, right. very important move. Well, right. Well said, Urashi, uh, representing the think tank of the government, Niti Aayog, and extremely valid point that each and every case, even a single case in a world, needs to be addressed and here any country for that matter would do good to address it. Uh, Dr. Puneet Mishra, uh, let me have you here in the show. Many thanks for joining us, sir. I know you've been listening for quite some time. Sir, uh, uh, I mean, if, if we go in the past, I know like uh, we've, we've had a history of uh, several mass vaccination programs as well. In terms of the vaccination, and certainly this is one of the largest uh, immunization program, in the past as well, has there been precedents where we have supplied our scientific know-how to the world in terms of vaccination? And what were uh, those instances? Yes, uh, as uh, Dr. 
uh, Gupta and then Dr. Urushi uh, have pointed out about the Indian pharmaceutical industry and then mm. about the vaccine and our uh, technical know-how about you know the knowledge which we have shared with the the world. Uh, you know, we believe we always believe in Basudev Kutumbukam. The world mm-hmm. is our family, and right. with that motto, whether it is vaccines, it is, whether it is uh, some other drugs, or it is technical know-how. We always mm-hmm. share our knowledge wherever it is required. Uh, as long as you are asking about the our experience and uh, help with other country, yes, uh, mm-hmm. you know uh, we are very huge population, so we have a very great experience of you know immunizing our children, and that right. is one of the biggest program. We mm-hmm. have conducted many successful uh, vaccination drives. Whether uh, uh, long back it was for the smallpox, which we have eradicated from all over the world. and that has been achieved long back at that time i mean india was not in that uh, good state in terms of you know uh, development and other things mm-hmm. after that we have successfully completed you know the polio drive you know uh, all the children they are vaccinated and it has been eliminated from india so uh, all those kind of you know experience which we have gained during uh, those program they have been mm-hmm. shared with uh, whether it is who or with other agencies and the country who required our help to conduct mm-hmm. large scale vaccine program uh, even during covid uh, you can very mm-hmm. well imagine that uh, in our priority uh, group uh, where we are going to vaccinate 30 crore people in a six month time mm-hmm. i mean that is equivalent of population of many countries uh, us have around 33 34 crore population so you know how huge uh, program we are going to conduct and Uh, it is not only the vaccine, but the technical expertise, uh, the uh, people who are going to give the vaccine, uh, to have a software which can, you know, uh, send the SMS to the people, which can generate certificates. So that mm-hmm. kind of technical know-how besides the vaccine, that would be useful for other countries. And now we are in position to help other countries, not only with the vaccine, which uh, government of India has started uh, mm-hmm. for last few days, where we are supplying vaccine to our neighbouring countries. but also technical know how in terms of the software in terms of the training to their healthcare workers in terms of maintaining cold chain in terms mm-hmm. of supplying the cold chain equipment and uh, other logistics right right that's very important not just the vaccine the but also the technical know how the scientific know how that is important and that is where india is playing a key role in supplying these expertise to scientific community of the neighboring countries the countries where we are exporting our vaccines uh professor gupta you you're also national coordinator of pharmacovigilance program of india now uh we have seen like as we are starting the mass immunization program there have been some adverse cases and we discussed it over over the period of couple of days about uh, these reactions uh, so i mean uh so dispelling any sort of rumors about it is also important besides uh you know manufacturing or having a robust pharmaceutical industry how important does it gets to have a you know thorough and foolproof communication about the efficacy of the medicine or a vaccine we are supplying professor gupta i think we must understand two important things mm-hmm. the process of vaccine introduction in the country Mm-hmm. and that is done when the animal data or the pre clinical data what is called as a non clinical data is is subjected to intense scrutiny by the experts and by dcgi means the regulator of the country and they go into great detail of each right. data and the committee of experts and dcgi come to the conclusion that this product is safe mm-hmm. and has an efficacious as far as the animal data is concerned or the pre clinical data is concerned only on that basis the first in human use and the pre clinical mm-hmm. to clinical is permitted mm-hmm. it however does not mean that there will be no adverse event but what is mm-hmm. assessed is the risk versus benefit if the benefit much much overweighs than the possible risk Mm-hmm. then the thing or the drug is introduced into the market mm-hmm. now in this situation this is still under clinical trial or this is still under phase 3 trial one drug but then 
we estimated that the the benefit which in such emergency situation is much much higher than the negligible or minuscule risk factor it was introduced and hmm. the the safety wall is the possible adverse reaction adverse effect which may happen are very minor because mm-hmm. it is well tested it can be headache it can be rash it can be some swelling it can be mild fever or in rarest of rare situation it can be anaphylaxis for which there is a empty number of empty number of of the supporting drill is in place mm-hmm. that means if something happens, everything is in place to take care of therefore mm-hmm. the apprehension should not be there at all it should mm-hmm. not be there at all absolutely the risk even if you breathe too much of air you drink too much of water there can be some possible risk mm-hmm. but this is the risk acceptable risk so that is what apprehension in taking vaccine is totally unfounded should mm-hmm. not be done and my message to all educated literate scientific and analytical mind is to dispel this vaccine or what is called mistrust or distrust or hesitancy whatever you call it as among those people who are being influenced by what we say our type of key opinion leaders and this every citizen who is educated understand is a key opinion leader must therefore tell very clearly that there is no risk in that that is right. important thing and that is right. why the confidence of international bodies international regulator the global the population the global leadership global right. scientists is in indian vaccine why there is a need to have apprehension from our own scientists i think this is totally unacceptable and i must say mm-hmm. india has shown that not only this is a pharmacy of the world mm-hmm. but this is innovation dependent innovation mm-hmm. has been the hub central hub of last couple of years and our prime minister has repeatedly saying innovation innovation so many startups department mm-hmm. of biotechnology department of science and technology indian council of medical research are focusing pumping money giving encouragement to innovation in developing new vaccine nasal vaccine different type of vaccine and the result is so many companies startups are now start making vaccine so many right. are doing repurposing of the drugs we are proud of them right 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 professor gupta that's very well put and of course like once again we'll say retreat listen to experts when it comes to the efficacy of vaccine of course how this is extremely proud moment for india to have their own immunization program along with that exporting of the vaccines uh, urushi uh, i have a fairly statistical question for you here i know you represent the think tank of the government of india now in terms of for the countries we are exporting so far you started like maldives bangladesh nepal myanmar seychelles bhutan a uh, majority of these countries are like densely populated country in terms not the largest but densely populated country so how important does it gets to have a robust program to have vaccination programs in these countries which are densely populated so as to have uh you can say uh going towards the end of the pandemic and it's i mean and and, and what role will india play in uh in say across the asia or subcontinent in that endeavor yes so uh, you know as i said that uh, a case anywhere uh, mm. anywhere in the world Uh, means that the pandemic threat is still very much alive and here we are talking of countries which are in our neighborhood uh, you mm-hmm. know so these are countries right around us um, and and there is a fair bit of movement in normal circumstances uh, you know with these countries right. uh, so you know it's really very important mm-hmm. that if the pandemic is to end uh, it's not just about india being able to end the pandemic but countries mm-hmm. you know around us our neighborhood and then more broadly the world um mm-hmm. we have to bring an end to the pandemic everywhere uh, so mm-hmm. i think that as a concept uh, is what is very important because you know if india does well uh, but countries around us you know suppose have certain uh, outbreaks which go out of control uh, mm-hmm. then it will be a challenge for us as well the, the threat okay. will okay. be then a lot for us as well uh, 
So I think the whole idea is that we need to, uh, you know, for this vaccine, not just look inwards, not just look at our own country, uh, but as I said, look at the world as well and support wherever we can. As I said, it, it is not going to be at the cost of our own population, of course, um, but wherever we can support uh, and mm -hmm. we can additionally provide some help, um, then I think it's very important for us to play that leadership role because we have the prowess. We have the innovation prowess. We have the manufacturing prowess. And I think that has been reinforced during this pandemic that even in a mm. crisis, uh, we, we were very, very quickly able to you know, develop these vaccines. And there are some more in the pipeline. So in fact, more vaccines might come in the months to come. Uh, so I think it's important for us to step up and you know, play this leadership role uh, in truly bringing this pandemic to an end. Right, right. That's very important. And especially like, uh, as you underlined that any pandemic or for that matter, any surge in cases in these countries in the neighborhood is also going to impact us in some way or the other. Uh, Dr. Mishra, here, like, uh, as we have two other panelists who, who uh, just mentioned about like, how it's important to curtail pandemic in other countries as well. So, in, in your last reply, you were talking about the, the scientific know-how that we, we are going to train these, these, these countries and their scientific community. Could you elaborate further how that becomes important for such a gigantic scale of pandemic? Dr. Mishra. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it, it's uh, really important that uh, uh, you take any area, whether it is, it is uh, 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 making people aware about, you know, uh, different measures like... Uh, uh, mask use or hand washing mm -hmm. or it is you know uh, giving the vaccine which is right. more technical job right mm -hmm. if you have to i mean uh, for example if you are supplying vaccine it is not just a virus which you are supplying that is one part of it mm -hmm. but i think the uh, the bigger part is that we provide them the technical know-how because many of those countries they have you know very uh, some of them they have a good health infrastructure but at other places they may not have uh, that much strength power which can be utilized for uh, for uh, vac vaccinating such a huge population in such a short time because here you have you have a very short time you want to uh, vaccinate as many people as early as possible so that you can you know uh, protect your healthcare workers protect your frontline workers and protect mm. your population and ultimately control the pandemic Mm. And uh, as I have, uh, as I have uh, um, uh, pointed out that India has a huge uh, trend manpower. Why? Because uh, we gave the vaccines uh, to our children, which is one of the biggest program. And it is not the doctors, it is not the pharmacists who are giving the vaccines. Uh, we use our primary healthcare workers. They are the trained, you know, females called uh, 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 female health worker, male mm -hmm. health worker. They are paramedic staff, and through uh, these staff, we were able to immunize, uh, you know, huge uh, population, and we have a very great experience of immunizing our right. own, uh, you know, population. So, so that is one thing. I mean, how to mobilize these people to the remotest area and how to train them. The other thing, which is very important in vaccination, is the logistics, especially mm. in terms of how to maintain the temperature. Uh, many of the countries, they may not have, you know, uh, uh, that much uh, good system uh, about the electricity and other things. Right. So how to uh, maintain the temperature in the remote locations at the primary health centers or at the immunization places? There, the India has the expertise because we have demonstrated, you know, uh, this uh, giving vaccine, whether it is in the deserts of Rajasthan or in any other part of country where uh, electricity or other things may be a problem with the high temperature. So we have that kind of uh, technical know-how. So that is logistics. Right. Then comes the transportation, because hmm. from the it is not that a vaccine would reach at the airport and the uh, the your job is done. From hmm. airport to the you know the last beneficiary, how to transport it through you know district through state, then through you know block and villages, sub centers. So that kind of expertise. And with the limited resources, because most of the countries uh, mm -hmm. uh, which are uh, uh, our neighboring countries, they have limited resources. So how to make uh, optimum use of your resources, give this vaccine, uh, transport this vaccine, maintain the temperature, all these things, they are required along with the supply of vaccine. So that, that's what I wanted to uh, mention here. Uh, right. That in that right. field, India has a very good uh, expertise uh, running the community-based health programs all over the country. So that is that is uh, something which we can uh, provide to our neighbors and to other countries wherever it is required. 
Absolutely. Well, many thanks, uh, Dr. Puneet Mishra. Many thanks, uh, Urvashi Prasad and uh, Professor Vaikan Gupta. Many thanks and pleasure to have all three of you in the show. And of course, throwing light on all the dimensions of this perspective of India, being the pharmacy of the world. Many thanks for watching this edition of COVID-19 in the fights back. But before we leave, a small appeal to all our viewers. Keep maintaining COVID appropriate behavior, keep wearing a face mask, keep washing your hands and also don't forget to maintain the physical distancing. Well, that's it in this edition. Thanks for watching Rat Sabha TV. Stay safe. Goodbye.